Good morning all. Uh, this is day about day eight on this program and uh, just getting ready to head out. I just thought I'd show you uh, the little quarters that I'm staying in here on this property. Uh, this guy's been a mate of mine for over 20 years. Heck of a nice guy. Uh, he did his time in uh, the US as well, bronc riding. Um, yeah, great lad. And uh, I stay here in this this little you know two room uh, cottage on the place. It's it's exactly what I need for uh, the dog trapping. I can move quickly, get things done, get out when you need to, and get back in when you need to. So very simple, uh, but very comfortable. So when we get a, a video clip coming out, sometimes uh, this might be where it's coming from. The one last night uh, was about 10 o'clock before I could get enough internet reception to get it posted. Sorry about that, guys and girls. But yeah, bit of gear kicking around, new compressor, food bins. Better put that on soon so I've got my gear with me. Grab the old hat and we'll be down the road. Dogs, you ready to roll? Hey? Yep, beautiful foggy morning. Can't really do much till that clears, but uh, yeah, this is life. Yeah, some people will recognize these old stairs uh, from previous videos. This is the, uh, the spot that uh, my young niece, Jessie and I uh, trapped from a couple of years ago and uh, did really well. We're getting up to five dogs a day here at one stage. Jessie, she's on the other side of the world now, chasing love and adventure. Miss her, she's a, she was a terrific character to have out hunting in the bush with us. My daughter Grace, same thing. She's off doing her own thing in her life, chasing romance and adventure, as young people do. And uh, as well, Judy and I, we've trapped out of here and uh, Judy's holding the fort now down, down home, uh, watching out a little block and looking after hunters and, and doing all the things like that. But hopefully next time she can be up here. But um, yeah, it just goes to show that we can pull regularly every year. You can pull, you know, probably 20 dogs out of this area and they keep coming back. There's so much big rangeland country around here uh, with so many dogs in it that we're just getting like the overflow that keeps coming in. The more you take, seems to be the more that comes in. Uh, but that's just the way it is. That's the nature of the game. So let's go out and check the traps. Uh, I've had uh, two trail cameras out and they've been in the, probably in the wrong places. Uh, but uh, a couple of photos. One dog came through right past the trap, went on the other side of the track. He, he just, you can see the dog in the photo coming along and actually bends away from where my human scent would have been on the ground. Uh, and that's thing, your body odor, everything you do puts like a carpet around you. It's not just your hands, it's everything you do. Uh, you've got to get that animal to accept that, to want to come in then to your scent pattern and see what you're doing. And that sometimes takes a little bit of time. We get them. I've only really got a couple more days I can spend in this area. I promise another landowner will be down there by a certain date. And uh, I'm going to be probably a day late as it is. I want to get this area sort of tidied up. Brandon, what are you doing in the front seat, dude? You kicked that old skunk out, did you? Hey? You're gonna get bashed. You're gonna get bashed. Morning, girls. Why the long face? Ha <laughs> ha. So I got both of you in there now. We're getting excited. So we're heading into the side of the property now where we've got these three uh, set patterns about oh, probably a kilometre apart each one. I think I've got probably upwards of three, maybe five younger dogs left here uh, in the immediate sort of mob. And they're right around. 
out all these new you know, baby calves. So these are crucial to the success of this um, of this trap line this time. Now let's see how we go this morning. No sign on the road yet. Coming up on the first one. Nothing. That's clear. Set's clear, and third one's clear. Now look for tracks over the top of our vehicle tracks. That'll give us an age. Sit, sit, sit. Right, we came. The landowner came through in his buggy yesterday evening, so this is the the freshest tracks. And then we've got a dog track over the top of that. So we know we've had a dog here uh, since I was here yesterday. Righto. So we come to this set. Dog prints, dog prints. This dog has come all around here, right around. It has not committed to go in there. Okay. We've got to build something like this to keep the cattle off at this situation. And that dog has not gone in, it's got around. Right, so that's one of the problems that we face in this area. Now it's a really good place for the dogs to come into. I'm trying to trap here, but it's like trying to drive a, a square peg into a round hole. Uh, it's probably too difficult. So what uh, I've done is put a barbed wire enclosure up the top of the hill here. And we'll go and check that now and just see because that that is more along the the lines of what i've been using lately to uh to get dogs in problem areas like this is actually build a, a spot where the cattle can't get into make it more natural and uh, see what we can do So this is what we did yesterday. We put two barbed wires up around a few trees here. We've got these dead pigs in the middle. I've set traps on the corner trees on drags. So if a dog gets caught, we'll take the drag away from the barbed wire, right? So it's not getting an animal hooked up in the wire. Um, and it's far enough away from the, the uh, pigs that the um, buzzards and the uh, eagles are not getting caught in as well. So we've tried to cover all bases here, right? We're looking after the natives and we're trying to get on top of these dogs. Okay, some people say they're natives. They say, oh yeah, these are just as native. No, sorry. Um, the wild dog that's come in here, you look at the reports there. Now, I know people argue one way, they argue the other. But from what I can see, the wild dog has been in this country, the dingo has been here for maybe five to 10,000 years. And in that time, it's been responsible for the extinction of many species of uh, native animals. Simply, it out uh, competed those animals. That's why some of our species that we have left, like the uh, Tasmanian devil, are only found in Tasmania because there's no dingoes down there. Uh, and I often say to people, if they think that a wild dog or a dingo is so benign, let them go in Tassie and let's see what happens to their unique uh, fauna and flora down there. Um, let's stop kidding ourselves. This is a major introduced predator that needs to be controlled. Well, this set here, very simple, just put one stick up as a guard. Come around here and say, right, what's happened? 
there's a dog print right there. All right. And here, through the dogs come through under it, there's the center of the pan there. Now I'd say what's happened is cattle have been here. Skunk, back on truck, skunk. Cattle have been here and they've moved the branches a little bit. They've moved that a little bit with their nose. They've just messed this up. So what I'll do, I'll just reposition some branches. I'll probably get another big one put in there and leave only one place that that dog can pass through. And I'll probably put, uh, there's a little bit of dog scat still there. I might just leave that the way it is. Just put another branch in here. Hopefully the cattle won't mess it and get that dog to shift its foot from there to there. It's a little bit better. I'll get down here and get look at it from a dog's point of view. Okay, that stick sticking out there will make it walk just to one side. So we're now directing it from there to there. little area right on the far sort of southern boundary of this block sort of place so there could be some pigs going through want to show me skunk honey mum Across and marked on that side as well. What have we got? Cattle. Brandon, do something intellectual. Do something intellectual. Brandon, come. Here. And Wallaby. No dog tracks. That doesn't mean there's no dogs. It just means I can't see dog tracks. Marking there. So he's marking tussocks here. Skunk, come here. Come here. Skunk. looking for any piles of scat usually if there's a marking place here there'll be a like a pile of scat somewhere here usually skunk will pick up on that not much it always amazes me how a living organism will hang on to life uh, we do it animals do it Plants do it. We hang on like with desperation, and uh, it is this chance we have to live is is a uh, is a precious thing. Have a look at this. It's quite a big gum tree. A big gum tree in this creek. Let's have a look at the root system. Look at this. Water comes racing through here. And this tree is up on stilts. Look at this. This whole thing is up on stilts. 
and it's hanging on, hanging on for, hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Look at these, these roots that go right back and hook up into the bank over here. Isn't that beautiful? I think we can take a lesson from that. Yeah, you know, give it your best shot. Give it a red hot go at living. Uh, you know, we know this is at least the chance we've got now. We might come back, we might come back again. Who knows, you know, be reincarnated. I'll probably come back, you know, a ripple strip on the side of a road. I oh, don't know, no, my luck. Uh, but like the highway men would say, I'll be back again and again and again and again. Let's make the most of it. Well, we're coming down to what I call Stallion Dam. And uh, we've got a couple of trap sets here. I think three across in the corner here. And then some further up in the next gully where we got that old tricolored bitch there yesterday. But uh, when I came through here, yesterday afternoon there was a kangaroo here that had been killed very badly and uh, I'll try and find it it was around here by this old tank it looked like it had been disemboweled was actually killed. Something I can't really show on the clips. I felt we had a pretty good chance at this set pattern here. But uh, yeah, cattle have come in, they've knocked the, the bit of a guard I had here, they've knocked it down over the top of the trap. No wonder it didn't work. Well, here's the kangaroo that was killed yesterday. We found it. it was down here further down towards the dam and it was yeah as I said it wasn't pretty it was put skunk out he went over here and he marked at the end of this log right at the end of the log so I've got four other sets over there and a, uh, a root carcass we dropped there but they, uh, these dogs seem to be just killing their own now. They might not come back. Chances are something will come back and check that. So I think I'll put a trap just right at the end of that log. Hopefully cattle won't wreck it. Put it in there, just one trap. And uh, I'll blow it. I'll put one there and I'll put another one at the tree. Double here, four over there. Let's see what happens. Skunk. I reckon I see pup tracks on the road here, so we might have a litter of, of probably 12, 14 week old uh, pups on the line. We shall see this. This Suzuki's run like a hairy goat today. Uh, yeah, I put some old fuel in it. I should have done that. Questionable fuel and it's Fluttering and carrying on. Not good. Time to stop for a little bit of lunch. Down here by a dam. Beautiful little spot. And uh, go on, Brandon. You can go in and have a swim. Go on. He doesn't like water, Brandon. I think he, he's scared that it might make him come clean. So, not much. Herring fillets. All right. It's a dolphin in a can. Yeah, that's what it is. Skunk's doing about his 10th lap of the dam. I think he was getting a little bit hot. Was this stuff supposed to be heated to about 40 degrees day after day? And still be okay? I've got to watch old skunk when I get down by the coast. He's got no concept of what can be in water. He thinks water is just so joyous and so uh, comforting so peaceful I'm trying to tell him hey mate watch out that stuff can kill you 
You're lucky there's no snapping handbags here, dude. Well, we've just come down to the uh, the sets where we caught that uh, big dog the other day on top of the uh, mound. And I looked down here in front and the drag log that was on top of the mound is gone again. So we're going a little bit closer. Pig. That's what's been in the bull pig. All right, there's the drag. And there's the set. What's it been? Cattle beast? No. Pig. Unfortunately, it's been a pig. That's what that looks like. And uh, over here, yeah, there's boar tracks. So there's been a boar pig come up there and put his foot in it. Would have only held on for a little bit. He would have pulled it straight out. Oh, a bit unfortunate, but anyway, away it goes. 